you know, I, I thought, you know, overall, I thought we got off obviously to a great start. Um, and I think, you know, you have to respect the game. That's what I told our guys, like, at the timeout. It's like, you got to continue to play the right way. You got to continue to play really, really hard. I thought they were kind of in that, um, I don't know, about the 12-minute mark on in the first half. We missed some open threes. But we just I didn't think we had that same zest that we had early. And, and give and give Spalding credit. They made a couple threes. And I think they hit three there and almost back to back to back. Um, second half was much better. I thought the effort level was terrific. You know, I thought Absaro, uh, just his toughness, you know, he just he just imposes his will on the game. I mean, I mean the dude's got five. I think he's got five turnovers in six games now. And for a freshman uh, point guard, I th that's almost unheard of. Um, but I thought Elmer, Ian Elmer, played really really hard. Flew around. I can see what he can do. Um, Kateki, I thought our freshman did some really nice things tonight. So, but it's always about more about us. We'll move obviously very quickly uh, to Marshall, who we have on uh, Saturday. Uh, you may mention Evan and his lack of turnovers. How do you feel about progress on turnovers for the team as a whole? Uh, Not just tonight, but yeah. Uh, we had seven in the first half. I think we finished with ten, right? Yeah, we had ten for the for the game, which is a really good number. Um, I'd love anytime you're twelve or less. I'd say that's that's a pretty good number, and it's more about percentage, right? So you talk about turnover percentage, and because you if you could have twelve turnovers, but if there's only uh, I don't know sixty possessions in a game, that's not very good. Now, if that's seventy five possessions in a game, that's really really good, right? So, and we want to be in the mid seventies to high seventies as far as possessions go. Um, so, again, I think ten's a pretty good number, but it, it's still an area where we really got to focus on. And I think just hit singles and keep it simple. Um, that's been an Achilles' heel for us to this point. We're, th we're in the three hundreds in the country and turning the ball over, and and uh, so it's got to get a heck of a lot better. Coach, there's a stretch in the second half for almost 10 minutes where you didn't give up a field goal, and that was where you were kind of able to yeah. open up that lead. What did you see defensively from your guys there? Yeah, toughness on the ball, ball pressure. It's like, man, it's like I, uh, I said, man, Ipsaro's up there, like pressuring the ball full court, hawking the ball 94 feet. And it's like, dude, can everybody else, can somebody, can somebody else join the party? Right? Like, um, and I thought he inspired. So I said, he imposes his will on the game. He's the same guy every day. You know, you never question about what, what his intent is. I mean, he plays to win. He's a warrior. And I, th I thought everybody else kind of fell in line the rest of the way. You know, like I thought we were playing hard. We're contesting shots. I thought Jaquel was much better in ball screen defense. Uh, and so was Kateki tonight. Again, they're going to learn. They're both young. I, sometimes i got to remind myself, Jaquel's one of the most experienced players that we have, and he's a sophomore. He came off the bench for us last year. He played like nine minutes a game. And... You know, but I'm asking a lot of them. We need them right now. Without Anderson and Reese right now, we're a little bit shorthanded. So it's like uh, I thought the ball screen defense was better. I thought our, our transition defense was better, and I just loved the toughness that we had on that ball. Speed on the offensive end of the floor, especially in that second half, was something that I think really carried through your lineup. What do you think, especially as you got deeper into your bench and got some of those walk-on guys in, what do you see from them on the offensive end? Yeah, I, I liked how you get know, a transition defense. Good, or good transition offensive teams start on defense. If you're not getting stops, it's hard to push it. Right, so you got to get stops. And then you got to be able to rebound the ball. Right, So, like, we struggled – defensive rebounding this year to this point. And I thought, again, it was better tonight. Now, it's got to show moving forward as well, but they ended up with five offensive rebounds. We got rebounded in 54 to 30 tonight. Um, but that, that, this has been the only game that that's been the case. Um, and, and, and good, good again, the way you ignite your break is by getting clean defensive rebounds. Some of our rebounds to this point in the year have been my almost, the other you know, team almost got it. It's like a 50-50 kind of loose ball tipped, and then we secure the rebound. And then by that time, they're already back. So it's like if you can block out and get clean defensive rebounds, then that can ignite our break. Because we got guards that can go. I mean, Cooper and Absar and those little guys, man, those, those dudes can push the ball and they advance it. And, and I think that's where we're really dangerous. Uh, Pateki has uh, 29 points over the last two games. You mentioned Anderson and Reese being out. How gratifying is it to see him kind of rounding into form at a crucial stage for you? Yeah, you know, he's getting better. Again, I, I, he uh, – He's super talented. He, he, he uh, it's like I told him. He, he once he, the game slows down for him and he's able to execute even better, man, he's gonna be really good. Um, you think about Evansville. He had eight on the road, 
St. Bonaventure, he had 10 on the road. He obviously had 19 tonight. He could shoot the ball. He could drive it a little bit. He could post it a little bit. He's mobile. He's got rebound more. I think he had one tonight, I think, on the stat sheet I saw down there. I'd like to see that number a little bit closer to double, you know, with a zero at the end of it, have a t you know, double-double type stuff. But he's getting better. I mean, from where he's, he's, he's coming a long way in, in six games. I mean, a long way. And he's still got a long ways to go. But, uh, but I do like the progress he's made. Uh, Coach, uh, you mentioned your freshmen earlier. Uh, tonight they had 65% of the scoring as a whole. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about how impressed you are with them uh, stepping up so early in their careers? Yeah. Um, you know, we, we're, we're asking a lot of our freshmen right now. Um, most teams across the country, I think, as a you know, casual college basketball fan should know this probably, but nobody's playing freshmen. Nobody. I mean, St. Same, same Bonaventure didn't play one. They're playing – they're the oldest team in college basketball. And everybody's trying to get old, stay old, right? And for us, man, we're, we're throwing those guys to the fire. They're talented. They're really talented. Now, they don't always know what they're doing. They make mistakes. But you can see the talent, you know, from a guy like Ian Elmer, for example. It's like Ian, um, just how athletic he is. God, he goes and gets that thing. I actually think he had 10 rebounds tonight. I think it's off by one, and I'll, I'll count it tonight. I think he had a double-double. Um, Kateki had 19. You see how Absaro was able to impose his will on the game. He doesn't turn the thing over. Cooper can score. Mackay's had a really good start. I mean, shoot, he had 15 points tonight. I mean, like, <clears throat> those guys are talented. Yeah, you guys haven't seen Reese Potter, really. Reese played a little bit against Evansville, but um, I expect him to be heavy in our rotation. And he did, But he wasn't. You know, he was playing probably about 50% against Evansville. So he's really talented. So we got, we got really talented young guys. They just got to continue to get better every day. Coach, can you talk a little bit more about how your team kind of picked up some of the slack? Uh, you know, you were relying on a guy like Darwishi Hunter. He came into the game 81 points over five yep. games to start the season. Incredible hot stretch. I think it's 16.4 that he's averaging. Yeah. Um, but tonight, only two points, but you had four other guys in double digits. So can you, you know, talk a little bit more about how your team yeah. picked up the slack tonight? I think it's good to see, you know, because I, don't, I think the go-to guy for us is always going to be the open guy. And Darwishi is a is a terrific player. He's the most experienced college basketball player we have on our team, albeit it hasn't been here at Miami, but he's got experience. He's played two years, full years of Division One basketball, right? So um, that's big for us, and he looks like it, <laughs> you know. So we're gonna rely on the score, and we know that. Um, the thing that I love about Darwishi that I want to mention: the game he had six points against, I believe it was Coppin State. Um, you couldn't tell after the game whether he had six or he had twenty tonight. I saw him out there talking to his little daughter after the game. Um, couldn't tell. That, that, that's a winner. He's a great teammate. He doesn't care. He just wants to win. But it's nice to see other guys step up. And I thought, uh, you know, we got other guys that are more than capable. they got to have the confidence to do it. Um, and, uh, and, and I think them experiencing that tonight will only serve us well moving forward. And then looking to the future, five straight games just – Four of them on the road, one of them coming yeah. back home against some really tough teams. You're yep. at Marshall, at Ohio State, at Davidson. You know, you're away at Wright State, and then you come back and you got to face Vermont, a perennial, you know, uh, NCAA tournament team. How do you prepare your team for that stretch, whether physically or yeah. mentally? Um, you know, you take it one game at a time, obviously. Uh, it's going to be challenging. I mean, I knew this when we scheduled it. You know, it's going to be hard. Um, but if we want to start to aspire to be those teams, to be a Vermont, well then, gosh darn it, we need to start playing them. Nobody will play Vermont. Nobody will play them. We will. I don't care. You know, we're going to play – we'll return the game next year to Vermont. Um, Wright State's going to be picked to either be one or two in their league. Marshall, same thing. You know, you talk about at Ohio State, at Davidson, they're all hard games. Um, but this the, – the, again, the MAC right now where we are – is a one-bid league. And until that changes, then this is how we're going to approach scheduling. Right? We'll play anybody anywhere. I could care less who it is. We'll play anywhere. We've got to have a certain amount of home games per MAC, like the MAC little rules and all that stuff. But we'll play anybody anywhere. I think it's great to play on the road, man. Because then when we get a chance to play at, uh, I think Toledo may be our first road game in the MAC, we'll be ready. We'll have seen, you know, Tough, tough, tough environments. We'll bend through all those things. And that's what makes teams good, man. You got to go through some adversity. See what we are, who we are. That's how you find out. If you just blow up, you know, just do a cupcake central, that's not going to make you better. It's not going to get you ready for back play. 
Ed Jackson, a career high 19 points for you tonight. What was going well for you on offense out there? Um, just honestly, just keeping it simple, like all the coaches they keep telling me, and uh, just kind of just like playing with my teammates. Like my teammates know know my spots, and they were giving me the ball tonight, so it was more more them versus me. So. How do you feel about the workload inside with uh, uh, you know several guys out? Uh, uh, is that something that you you look forward to? to all that that amount of work inside. Um, I mean, yeah, obviously don't like seeing people out with injuries and stuff, but yeah, no, it's been I've been having a good time just kind of playing college basketball. I mean, it's, what more can you ask for? It's it's good time. So I've been I've been learning and uh, yeah, it's been it's been a good good ride so far. So you, uh, you attended St. Bonaventure and then 19 tonight. Do you feel like you're starting to kind of get into the flow of things? Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. My confidence is, is definitely getting stronger out there, and I'm becoming more comfortable within the offense and just learn just how to play within myself without trying to force or do anything because if I just trust my teammates, they'll find me open, and we'll, we're going to keep, keep doing well like we did tonight. So. I I know tonight was a little bit different, but up at St. Bonaventure, is that giving you kind of a taste of, uh, uh, you know, the physicality of college ball? Oh, 100%. Uh, definitely fighting against uh, the two bigs that St. Bonaventure had. It was definitely definitely way different than uh, than high school ball. So, you know, it was good to play against them, good to play against people that were five, six years older than me. So, I mean, it was, it's, a, it's an experience that's going to make me better, so I just saw it as an opportunity to just kind of get better and just see what I need to work on. And, yeah, no, it was good.